the absurd, the obsessed, the obscure. Follow us if you dare as we open the files at My Weird Space. Hold on tight as we go racing with a difference. Go hopping mad in the sand. And perform acrobatic balancing acts. India's top vehicle maker, Tata Motors Limited, unveiled its new low-cost car named the Nano. Dubbed the people's car, the Nano will be powered with a 624cc gasoline engine and will meet all safety requirements. The car is said to have a mileage of 20 kilometres to a litre. With the car being unveiled at an auto show in New Delhi, many onlookers were amazed at what they saw, especially the price tag. The Nano sells for a small price of only 2,500 US dollars, plus all those little extras like value-added tax, of course. The car only has basic features like a speedometer, fuel gauge and oil light and doesn't have any of those extra little mod cons that we all enjoy, like a radio. Sounds like a bargain buy if you're after something a little more advanced than a lawnmower. My Weird Space has found the next extreme sport, airboarding. After being asked by his son for a hovering skateboard, an Australian inventor went to work and created this hovercraft-like design. The airboard runs on a nine horsepower, four-stroke petrol engine and has a five litre fuel tank that will last for up to an hour. It has a top speed of 20 miles per hour and is designed for use on tarmac. Designers are in the process of modifying the board so it can be used on water, ice or snow and are trying to get more power so it can have a top speed of 45 miles per hour. Although it looks quite awkward, it's actually fairly simple to operate. Armed with only an accelerator, steering depends on the weight transfer of the rider and braking is a matter of easing off the accelerator. If you're up to something with a reasonable price tag and that makes you look super cool, then look elsewhere. It'll set you back around 30,000 US dollars. It does look like fun, but makes you look a bit, well, funny. If you thought airboarding looked ridiculous, then check this out. People in the Bavarian town of Karlsfeld near Munich have won the award for the most ridiculous looking sport, ox racing. The goal is to ride the unusually unruly bovine racing machines down a 200 metre course without steering it into the lake which forms one side of the racetrack. Some riders take it so serious that they make sure that the ox gets the right nutrition, hard training and don't forget the psychological preparation needed for one of these races. Each team is allowed a driver who runs behind the ox, attempting to direct it towards the finish line, and the one who rides the ox attempting not to get hurt or look like an idiot. The lucky winner gets to take home a trophy and a rather bruised butt ox. Like airboarding, I think I'll leave ox racing to the professionals. Now, if you're after a sport that's a little more adrenaline filled, then this is for you. Apart from needing a lot of bravery and good balance, you'll also need to be a little crazy to want to do something as dangerous as this. Inline skaters from different countries have come to race on the 1984 Sarajevo bobsleigh course where they can reach speeds of up to 95 kilometers per hour on a track measuring 1.8 kilometers.
We must remember though that when attempting to do something as dangerous as this, we must wear protection. Although I don't really think a helmet will do much if something went wrong. This makes all other extreme sports look like a walk in the park. Skate park, that is. If your children begin annoying you during the school holiday season, then send them to boot camp. Here they can enjoy riding in tanks, wearing camos with a pretty pink beard while looking very nervous, and pretend that they're having the time of their lives. In South Korea, students attend boot camp to learn what it takes to be a Marine, with some as young as 12 attending the camp. Parents aim to discipline their children and change their spirits. The camp was aimed at testing spiritual and physical strength, as well as being able to roll around, play in the sand and hug one another. Maybe they thought imitating the video game Leapfrog would make it more fun and interesting for the younger generation. Or dancing the Zorba dance to help pump up a boat which they can then get to carry out and sail on. Did I forget to mention that this is all done during winter? Watch out all you professional basketballers, these super grannies are fit, energetic and ready to slam dunk their way to the top. All in their late 60s, these grannies still tear up and down the basketball court, shooting hoops and knocking opponents to the ground. Instead of baking cookies and sipping on cups of tea, these women have formed the Louisiana Tigerettes and have an impressive track record. They've won 69 of their 71 games. And what better way to humiliate and embarrass your grandkids than to play a game of basketball against them? With a team of basketball grannies, it's left me wondering, who's in the cheer squad and what are they wearing? Come to think of it, I don't want to know. You go, girls. Scientists have come up with a new and improved way of losing weight. It's a new detox treatment known as body melt. And no, it doesn't mean that you melt your body, although that also is a good way of losing weight. Body Melt combines thermal clay and biologically active plant extract mixture. As a handheld device transmits two gentle forms of low level electrical stimuli. This treatment promises weight loss immediately. It claims to help reduce the appearance of cellulite on both men and women by firming, toning and detoxifying. It starts with the body being brushed all over. Anti-cellulite serum is rubbed into the skin and a firm cream is applied. They then place a special clay under the body, hook you up to some electrical cords and shock you. Obviously there's a little bit more to it than this, but this gives us a general idea of how to lose weight the lazy way. Another great idea in the battle against the bulge, exercise. What better way to start a story than with a guy in speedos, a multicoloured swimming cap and a belly flop? These people are crazy. It's two degrees and they're out there diving and swimming around like it's a hot summer's day. Apparently this is supposed to make you feel more energetic and healthy. But it looks more like a great way to get yourself one ripper cold and a good case of frostbite. 
Some people say this kind of exercise keeps them away from the doctor, but it seems the only doctor these people need to see is a shrink. Now this looks like more fun and it's a bit more sensible if you ask me. Skiing is becoming more and more popular, but these people decided instead to play human 10-pin bowling by sliding down man-made ice slides. I really hope they wear thick underwear while they're doing this. You wouldn't want to get frostbite there. To save money on models in China, they've decided to make just everyday people wear really big heads. After all, who needs an attractive face when you're modelling clothes? As this girl demonstrates. She's wearing a green dress, a green dress, a green dress. She's wearing a green dress on a Monday morning. These models have a new outfit for every day of the week. Another money-saving idea in China was to use puppetry to teach everyone the English language and then televise across the country. Puppetry was one of China's most revered ancient theatre arts, but now it just looks downright scary. China is still learning the ABCs of adapting itself to television. A good start though, guys. Don't use scary puppets. Meet Bob. Bob is a robot designed by an inventor in Bangkok. This designer is in the process of making a whole orchestra out of robots. So far, Bob can play any wind instrument available. The reed pipe, the saxophone, you name it, he can play it. Don't know about the whole orchestra thing, but it does look like this inventor is well on the way to making the new and improved Thunderbirds. Bob is another one of those inventions that's meant to make us all look in wonderment and leave us all picking our brains wondering how did they do it. But judging by the look on this little girl's face, Bob has sadly turned out to be another invention that's frightened us by his freakishly human-like features. Except, of course, those fingers. Thunderbirds are go! Welcome to the Gentleman's Library. We feature weird and wonderful collections, including stuffed animals, animal skin rugs, scientific tools and artwork. This piece of roadkill is just one of a set of five collector's items, which look just marvellous in this display. and small, it's just those bottles were really big. This globe of the world has every gentleman's library in the world marked on it. So wherever you go, you can find more pointless artefacts, like this one. Look at the wonderful scripture on this. Don't know what it means, but it looks superb. Thank you for joining our tour of the gentleman's library. Hope you had a pleasant time. life grand when you retire, or meant to be. Instead of relaxing and enjoying life bathing in the sun at Hawaii, this gentleman decided to fulfil a lifelong dream of building a plane. It has all the essentials one needs for a plane, including the much needed joystick to control the plane. So far though it only turns left.
but you're going to need some fast pedalling to get that thing off the ground because I don't think that wing at the back will generate enough breeze. Being designed for one passenger, there's only enough room in the back for the petrol tank. There's only one small problem I've noticed. Where are the wings? Back to the drawing board for you, my friend. I don't know how they came up with this, but in Tokyo, carpenters, the doublers firemen, who have maybe inhaled too much smoke while fighting fires, have decided to do acrobatics on ladders. The ladders measure 6.6 .6 metres high and are held upright by a half a dozen men. One brave soul then climbs up to perform tricks that normally no one would be dumb enough to do. These back-breaking stunts require a lot of muscle, skill and stupidity. For years now, this has been a form of entertainment that many onlookers have enjoyed, mainly because it's not them up there risking their lives. This could be considered a circus act, but these firemen take their jobs seriously and only perform on their lunch break. Considered heroes in their town, they use their time wisely, as we can see, by learning acrobatics and don't waste it clowning around. Looks like playtime's over for today. In Mexico, 64 Mexicans take part in the Red Bull's crashed ice competition. The competition involves a combination of downhill skiing, hockey and border cross, all on a course with hairpin turns, big air jumps and man-made obstacles. And by watching some of these skaters, you can see why it's called the crashed ice competition. It looks like these onlookers just witnessed something very painful. The 64 competitors will eventually be narrowed down to four, who will then fight it out for the top prize, a trip to Canada to do it all over again. I'd hate to have to tally up the amount of sprained ankles and broken bones in a competition like this. Can someone get some ice to stop the swelling? This story is about a group of people called the Berlin Seals. They enjoy the occasional dress-up party with different themes every time. The theme for this particular dress-up party is a Venetian carnival. Dressing up in many outrageous outfits, they dance around and generally make fools of themselves. But hey, who doesn't? These people do it with a difference though. Once they've had enough of dancing and generally being merry, they parade down to the beach for a quick dip. Now most people would prefer to go to the beach when the weather is fine, but not these people. It seems the weather is hot enough when the thermometer reaches only four degrees. At least this man is here to make sure things don't get out of hand. It's a bit late for that though, don't you think, mate? When a child is caught smoking a cigarette, the parents punish it by making it smoke a whole packet. Well, this story has nothing to do with that. It does, however, involve a parent and a child of a different kind. The father of two has decided to take his two-year-old daughter skydiving. Maybe it's so they can get some embarrassing photos of her for her 21st birthday, or just because they're nuts. Now before you go calling child services, the daughter is harnessed to her father and every safety precaution has been taken. 
The only problem is the daughter isn't old enough yet to be able to tell her parents whether she's afraid of heights or not. Bit of bad luck if she is though, eh? And what's next on the agenda for this father-daughter team? How about some crocodile wrestling or jumping a motorbike through burning hoops while blindfolded? They sound like fun too, don't they? This is the University of Connecticut in the United States. And these scientists are hard at work, maybe trying to find a cure for cancer or some way to solve world hunger. But, oh no, they're up to something much more important. Trying to produce the world's first allergen-free cat and trying to clone them. Well, this is an issue that's been threatening mankind for a long time. And if not solved in the near future, it could mean disaster. This is a great solution for all those people that suffer allergic reactions to cats. But for all those cat haters who try to use their allergies as an excuse not to like them, it's time to find a better reason. These kitties are cloning, I mean clawing their way to the top. What better way to spend your day? Admiring the beauty in the sea. Hang on a minute, what's this? A mermaid playing the harp while Elvis Presley serenades her? I must have swallowed too much seawater and gone crazy. But in Florida, this is for real. Hundreds of people come to take part in the Underwater Music Festival, where a local radio station puts on the event to promote environmental awareness. Special underwater speakers allow the audience to hear a number of songs being performed by the band. Now this is what I call deep sea jiving. For anyone that has a love of films, this is one place you need to visit. Christie's in New York. Specialising in famous movie costumes and memorabilia. This Superman costume, worn by Christopher Reeve, is said to fetch around 16,000 US dollars. For that price, you'd be thankfully wore the underwear on the outside. Other memorabilia includes Russell Crowe's axe from the film Gladiator, and will set you back around $1,000. And for fans of Elvis Presley, a number of suits worn by the King in his younger and thinner acting days are also on display. If you're after that pilly op shop look, why not purchase this lovely sports coat that Elvis wore in his films? Back in the day, that was one smooth looking outfit. And top it off with Austin Powers' glasses and you look absolutely shagadelic. Yeah, baby. Well, join us next time for another Oscar-worthy episode of My Weird Space.